Welcome. In front of me, I have the Huawei P50 Pocket. And today I'll show you how, well, maybe not how, but what kind of uh, launcher I use on a typical daily basis on my phone. And, uh, and basically how I set it up. Now, this will be a little bit, uh, a little bit cut down just because this is the um, Huawei and uh, I do use the same thing on my Huawei, but mine is a little bit dated, so it still has Play services and thus also Google, which for me includes things like well, obviously the launcher that I will be using, which I paid for a pro version of it, giving me additional access to features and um, uh, widgets. I think it's like LS widgets or whatever it was called, um, where you basically can widget up the hell your device uh, with adding some nice looking nice looking widgets along with uh, downloading different ones specifically for the application giving you a much uh, much more access to different kind of like looks to your phone so i'll kind of skip this i'll just give a general kind of setup of this uh, that i use personally and just to kind of give you a look how that looks like if you're if you like it that's how i have it set up right now so um basically if you uh, if you swipe to the uh, to the right, I normally get uh, get uh, Google feed, but you just quickly fix that or not. Apparently, just does nothing. Uh, it bugs out on my phone sometimes since like an update. Uh, but anyway, if you swipe to the left, you get your uh, all your apps. Then let's see, swipe up. Uh, I don't want to show because that's where I have my contacts. And then obviously I have swiped down for notifications. This device, if you probably are aware, or I think Huawei in general, doesn't support swipe down for notifications. This is part of the widget, which I really like. So anyway, let's get started. So right here, <clears throat> uh, I already did, uh, I didn't download it from the store, uh, at least on this, I just simply transferred it from my phone to this one. So we'll see how well that worked. Uh, I do, like I mentioned, have a pro version of this, which gives me some additional uh, features which aren't in the free version. Though there is a free version and it still works. And I should probably mention that the free one does have uh, ads when you go into your app tray. Oops, not what I wanted. So anyway, let's uh, find my smart launcher right here, which is right over here. There we go, once you launch it, uh, it just kind of looks like this. Now I did, I did kind of go through it a little bit. So normally you would get a setup, which I mean, just go through it. It's not complicated. I also did uh, transfer icon pack, which I use Wicons for uh, for the home screen and for apps uh, app tray. I just use whatever. So probably using the default uh, default apps from Huawei. So uh, let's um, let's number one actually change uh, the default launcher. For, once you actually change it yourself, it doesn't give you that pop-up again, I think. Let's see. Maybe I can do it from here. No, there it is. So when you hold this home screen, it gives you the entire like page right here of settings. I can set right here, small launcher as default. Oop. And now when I go home, it just takes me to the launcher itself. So there we go. Now, as you can see, this is just the default look minus the wallpaper. The wallpaper is changed. And let's see, it looks like it has a second page, it has uh, top stories, it has uh, apps above, and then below we have uh, the, the actual like search. Personally, I don't like it because I just don't, it's not kind of how I like it. So let's start off by switching it up. So to switch up the position or remove some of them if you don't want them, uh, we can navigate right here to either one of them uh, and set it up each one of these uh, categories, or we can first start off by actually setting up the pages itself. So I'm gonna just kind of eat all of them. So right now we only have the home screen and nothing else. So I'm gonna start off right here and I'm gonna make uh, the apps. I believe that is what I want, yep, okay. So here we go, we got apps. Then on here, hello, we no, no, never mind. I was about to be very surprised that I can have Google, uh, Google as a newsfeed, but maybe. Nope, 
<laughs> that's a negative. So I just gonna, I'm just gonna keep it empty. I can't have Google. I don't want the top stories. It just kind of never gives me anything that I'm interested in. Then below, uh, I want search and above. Let's see what I. How do I have it set on my phone? I don't have anything. Okay, so basically that would be it. So uh, we have our apps right here. We have our search right here. This allows you to quickly search for applications uh, as well, which is quite nice. And additionally, obviously when you're using the device, it shows you a couple apps that you use frequently. Additionally, it also shows you contacts. So that is a really handy thing to have, in my opinion. It's a quick way to access basically a lot of things that you use on a daily basis. Uh, now, we want also that uh, drop down. So I'm gonna hold it again. And from here, we're gonna go down somewhere. Where is it? Oh, it's gonna be right here. A gestures and hotkeys. Now I'll mention this is uh, accessible only the uh, paid version. So do keep that in mind. I, I don't think you can access the shortcuts on a free version. So from here, once uh, if you bought it, you can follow this up. If you didn't, you can kind of skip this. So we have enable swipe gestures, we want to do a single finger and we want to do swipe down and then we're gonna go LS shortcuts. And from here we can choose a bunch of other ones, a bunch of shortcuts, but honestly what I'm interested in is the, uh, where is it, uh, show notification panel. There we go. So now you do swipe and you get notifications. I'm gonna also quickly check for additional option if there is a way. So, preferences, show, toggle panel. There we go. So this might interest some other people a little bit more than the notifications. Uh, personally, I think I would stick with the toggle uh, panel. So that's what I'm gonna have. Okay, so we got this set up. Now let's go into the icons on the home screen. Now, um, since the update to Smart Launcher 6, because this is the sixth version, um, they changed. Uh, so, so the applications are equally spaced out. They basically work the same way as any other phone in a grid. I don't like this, uh, considering the previous versions of Smart Launcher didn't have that. They did allow you to have something else. They had like an icon a layout, which allowed you to have icons spaced out uh, evenly in uh, each row. So meaning if I had four, they would be all spaced out evenly between each other in only this row. And if in a top row I had six icons, as an example, instead of four, again, they would be spaced out evenly between only each other. So they would overlap, for instance, uh, over the grid lines uh, as, as you normally couldn't be able to do this. Now, with this kind of update, you lose this uh, and it's only as a widget. And let's see, so to add it, we'll go into widgets, we'll then go to uh, icon group, and I believe it was this one. No, I think it was this one. So as you can see, that's this, uh, this thing. And from here, I can quickly check if this is the actual one. I'm gonna add just a bunch of random apps. Yep, that is this one. So as you can see, we have uh, five icons at the bottom and then two at the top and they are literally smack in the middle of the two uh, below that. So that is kind of what I'm looking for to have them evenly spaced out. I do have, as you will see right here, only, um, what is it, five, nine apps. So now the reason why I only have nine is because there's another part of this launcher which I adore. It allows you to have double apps. So as an example, Let's see if I want to, what I want to open. So let's go with my music player. So there's my music player in a corner, right? I mean, it's obviously distinguishable with the headphones. You open it and there we go. It's my retro music, which I picked. And that's what I use on a daily basis. But if I double press it, it opens up Spotify instead. So there we go. And you can assign this to any kind of application. Uh, for instance, I have browser and YouTube on a double press. So that's nice. So anyway, let's go back to this. So I'm gonna get rid of this just because it's not, nothing like super nice. 
And to remove these icons, I do need to put a little bit of effort, unfortunately. And there we go. Now I have a almost fully clean look right here. The only thing left is this uh, smart search, which I also don't like. So, whoop, bam, it's gone. Now we can start off by adding a widget. That is for people that want to have the same kind of thing that I do uh, with them spaced out evenly in each row. If you don't really care for this, which is totally understandable, you can just stick with the default one. You do have options, which I will show right now if I actually can access it, there we go. So you have options on the home screen when you tap on it to go into icon appearances. So we can change the, how the icons actually look like. And in here we have a grid. So you can change how many columns and rows you have on here. Um, so again, you can customize this however you want. As you can see, you can have it really freaking crammed in here. If you want, you can obviously also change the size of them. Although it looks like they already are. Ooh, that's, that's nice and small. Anyway, so as you can see, you can go crazy with this. Now I'll be using this, like I mentioned, so I'm gonna add the typical things, browser, camera, what else? Contacts I'll skip because it's uh, along with the phone. Messages. Phone. And you know what, I'm just gonna keep it at this. I would probably want to also add music. Let's see if I can. Add icons. Can I search? Oh, that would be nice. There we go, music. Um, gallery. As you can see already, we have a couple more. Now it looks like the actual icon layout and spacing is affecting the uh, little widget right here. So I'll go back and change it because this is ludicrously small. So and there we go. That looks a little bit better. Now for this, we can just move it down whoop, and whoop. And as you can see, you have it right at the bottom. And right now, it looks like they're located in the grid uh, as you normally have it, but that is because at the top there is only one and it's smack in the middle. So, uh, from here, what I'm gonna do is, let's see, I'm gonna add double apps right here. So, let's see. On the browser, like I said, I am gonna do this for one app because everybody's preference will be different. So this is strictly how I like to use it. If you do like it, obviously follow it up, but uh, you can set it up however you like. So as you can see right here, we have browser. So what I can do is hold this, then I can go into settings and do double tap. And from here, I will scroll all the way down to YouTube Vents. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is YouTube Vents, it's just a YouTube. And it can be installed on this device without any problem. And uh, you don't need any Google services for it to run. So that actually solves a lot of problems for, I would expect probably a lot of people that only like to use YouTube, but don't really care that much for Google services. So anyway, as you can see, now I tap once and I have my, my browser, I double tap it and it opens up YouTube. Fantastic, just the way I like it. Now it should actually load. I checked it before and it did run or work, so come on. Maybe I'm having problem with the internet. And that's weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't have internet, so that something happened. So yeah, um, there we go. Uh, that's primarily what I do, obviously. Like I mentioned before, you can uh, use uh, custom widgets right here. You can remove this one if you don't like it. It's just a time. You can substitute it for something else, which might be a little bit more pleasing to you. Uh, what I would probably recommend doing is using the uh, custom like widget application uh, that does cost money. I don't exactly remember how it was called. Let me quickly check. Hopefully I can find it quickly. 
But it looks like I can't, because uh, now that I need it, I can't remember it, and neither can I find it. Okay, there we go, found it. So it's right here. Uh, it's what I have, or what I uh, use for this sometimes. And it gives you a great deal of customization. So it's the KWGT uh, Custom Widget Maker. Now this is just... Uh, it's not really a widget pack, it's a application that allows you to basically make widgets and it has a insane amount of uh, customization to it. So obviously with this, uh, this is needed and then you can download any kind of KWGT widgets itself. So KWGT uh, and just search for that and you will see there is a bunch of them, should be a bunch of them, minimal KWGT. You can see there is one. Uh, so find ones that, that appeal to you in terms of looks, uh, what, are you, what are you going for? And from there, uh, once you apply them, you have just a general application where you can just add them to your home screen. And then you can set it up. So as an example, when you tap on a specific portion of it, it will open up some kind of application. As an example, if you have time, right here, the default one, I believe, never mind, it doesn't open up time. But normally um, you can set it up to open up time, which is how I have it, as you can see. So right here, if I tap on it, it opens up time. Now, I do use a fairly basic looking one, so that, that's just my preference. I like to have it clean and simple, uh, but obviously you can choose whichever one. And from there, you can set up the uh, additional like actions for the press of the widget. Uh, there is a lot of customizations. When it comes down to actually dealing with the KWGT, I do recommend watching some other video how to set it up because it is overwhelming at the first, uh, first glance. I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to add a widget, but then when it comes down to like customization, changing the uh, sizes of text and uh, uh, icons and just uh, any kind of art that is added to that, will be a little bit more uh, advanced. Additionally, adding these uh, actions to tapping on that widget uh, will be uh, somewhere a little bit more buried in there. So I do recommend checking out some other video on setting up strictly the, uh, the, wi the KWGT widget itself. But anyway, this would kind of conclude the uh, customization and custom launcher that uh, that I guess I recommend. Um, it works really well on, on Huawei's. That's something that I want to stress. Something that uh, doesn't really happen as with this launcher. That's what I use on all the devices. As an example, Samsung does have a problem with this, uh, with this from time to time. And uh, it works flawlessly on Huawei. So highly recommend checking it out if you look if you like how it looks like and how it performs now personally what i do why i use it something that i want to justify why this is my go-to launcher is strictly because of this as you can see this, this is what you would co consider an app tray though it's uh, not really an app tray it's more like an app shelf categorized into uh, and each application is in its own category it's like a library basically so as an example if you tap on settings have all the things that it considers as settings. Uh, then we have some kind of utilities, uh, media, games, uh, services, and contacts. So as you can see, everything is neatly categorized. They get sorted automatically, though the sorting isn't always the best. Uh, keep that in mind. But for that, what we can do is just kind of grab it, whoop, and drag it over to a different category. And as you can see, there it is, it's now switched. So like I said, it gives you a nice, easy way to access your application, have them easily find found, foundable in each category, which is sorted automatically. And additionally, if you have apps that you use quite often, you'll just simply find them by swiping up. Though, like I mentioned, there is nothing showing up here for some reason at the moment. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, this will conclude the video. And if you found it helpful, if you like this kind of launcher, um, you can support me by just hitting that like button uh, and subscribing. You can support the creator of the launcher by just buying his product. So anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.